All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to protect the data on your Synology NAS by knowing when a hard drive is most likely gonna fail. That way, you can have another drive ready, and even with the upcoming DSM-7, you'll be able to just clone the data over. That means you would not have to rebuild. You could instead just clone the data from one drive to the other, assuming you had an extra bay, and be able to pull out the broken drive all without having to do a RAID rebuild. I'm really excited for this. As soon as DSM-7 does come out, I'm gonna to have to test it. All right, so the way we're gonna be doing this is what's called a smart test. A smart test basically is a test that your hard drive does on itself to make sure everything's still working well and to get different attributes about it. Iron Wolf has their own tests and it actually has been integrated with Synology. And so I'll be showing that as well, but I run both of them. All right, so first off, what can a smart test tell you? Well, there's a lot of things that smart attributes tell you. It's not just about how bad the drive is. It's also things about how many terabytes have been written, how long the head has been spinning, how long it's been booted up, all these different things that can tell you how old the drive is and how worn in it is. But there are also the really key ones, such as bad sectors. So bad sectors are sections of a hard drive that the data has gotten corrupted or some issue has come out with. And that's a normal thing about a hard drive. Hard drives are not perfect. That's why it's really nice to use a file system that has checksums like BTRFS. So a bad sector is essentially a part of your hard drive that has gone bad. Your hard drive detects this because it says, hey, when I read the data from that, it didn't add up right. And so it marks it as a bad sector. This is why it's really good to use a file system such as BTRFS that has checksums. Checksums essentially allow this to be detected quickly and easily and if you're using a redundant RAID, it basically calculates the checksums from all these different RAID values and knows, okay, that should have been this and is able to keep going without causing any errors. Basically, it fixes the file before you ever see it's corrupted. But then the hard drive goes, oh wait, that was a bad sector. And so it needs to mark it off. The way this is done is dependent on the hard drive, but almost every single one of them will go through and do it whenever you run an extended smart test. So that's where it goes through, reads all the data off of it, checks to make sure everything's good, and then gives every single sector a little checkbox. Then if it detects anything bad, it'll unmap that data. Basically with something like BTRFS, it'll go through and say, okay, I know what the data should be. I'm gonna copy that to the new section of the drive and we'll be good and we will just not use that section of the hard drive. One or two bad sectors over time are expected. That's why it's good to use a file system such as BTRFS and redundant RAID for long-term storage of data. However, once you start getting a lot at once, that's when you really need to start getting a new hard drive and be able to replace it as quick as possible. So that's really the value of what a smart test tells you. There are other attributes that Synology tracks, but they're not as good as just clean bad sectors. So what will Synology do in this case? Synology, when it runs a smart test, and we'll get to that in a minute here, and it finds a bad sector, you can actually have it set up to email you. And that's when you should really start looking at it. If you have one bad sector and it's an older drive, well, you don't have to freak out too much yet. As soon as you start getting a few, and if they start growing, that's when you need to order one as soon as possible and be able to have that replaced as soon as possible. This is because hard drives tend to fail all at once. And so they'll give a little bit at the beginning and then just and all of your data is gone. And so it's good to have that backup ready. So the way Synology takes a smart test data is it basically goes through and it looks at all the different values and it checks the thresholds for them. It basically has three different thresholds. The first is good. That's where you're gonna be 99.9% .9 of the time, hopefully. So good basically means there's nothing wrong with the drive as far as Synology cares. Then there's a next section that is basically a warning section. It's maybe got a few bad sectors and things like that and Synology goes, okay, you should replace this soon. Once you see that warning sector, that's really when you need to make sure you've ordered something off Amazon and it's coming to your house. Then finally, there's the damage. Damage basically means we don't trust the data on this drive. We're probably not even gonna to write to it. So those are the three different sections and it's good to have this leeway. But these values are only run when a smart test is run. And so that's why it's really important to make sure that smart tests are run. So running smart tests on a Synology NAS is incredibly easy. All you have to do is go ahead and log into DSM, like I've done here, and we're gonna go into Storage Manager. So Storage Manager shows you where all your hard drives are and everything like that. And we're going to go down to HDD, SDD for our hard drives and our SSDs. 
And so it lists out every single one of the drives that is plugged in. And as you can see here, it's got health info. So we're just gonna click on this for this first one. And we're gonna be shown a few different options. So it's gonna give you the very simple ones for how many bad sectors, how long it's been on for, how many times it's reconnected, and the temperature. And so these are really quick and easy metrics and probably the most important. Then we can also see up here, I've got the Ironwolf Health. That's because these are Seagate Ironwolf drives. And so Synology has partnered with them to actually read out its own section. I don't know a ton about it, but I still do run the tests and it's been giving me 000, 000 all good codes. So I guess it's working fine. I've not noticed anything about it, but it's good to have the manufacturer's interpretation as well. But I would keep both on. It's not a big of a deal. So we can look at it here. Really all it does is give you an output code. 000 means normal. And that's basically what you can interpret. And you can see when it was last run and even run it here. It's actually pretty quick, but I'm not gonna run it right now. Then no matter who you are, you should have smart up here. So there are two different types of smart tests, a quick test and extended test. A quick test basically just goes through and checks it really quickly. And that way it doesn't really disrupt your day and you can get quick values out of it. But then there's the extended test that reads everything on the drive and makes sure everything's good. And we're going to go through and show you how to schedule these in a minute here. And so it'll also show you down here the test results. So the last quick test result and the last extended test result. And it just gives you the output of them. So they're healthy, healthy, which is good. Then at the very bottom, we can have the smart attributes and we'll click on that. And so these are all the key variables that are coming out of the smart test. They've got error read rate, everything down here. And you can go through and look up what they mean for your specific drive. It changes based off a lot of things, but if you want to know how much has been written and read, you can use these. Note, this is LBAs, which is not terabytes, it's not gigabytes, it's a different unit based off the size of the drive. I've never quite understood it, but it should be pretty easy to Google. And it gives you all of these values. And it shows you the value, worst, threshold, and raw data. Raw data is actually what's being spit out by the drive. Then the value is essentially Synology's interpretation of it. Then Synology basically makes sense of it with these three columns. Value, what the most recent value was. Worst, what the worst ever recorded value was. And threshold. Threshold is when you start dropping errors and that's when it's going to start notifying you. So you can look through them here. I wouldn't care too, too much about the worst because as you can see here, I've got some super low ones for sometimes the hard drive was at random times. And so I'll go ahead and close this. And so the final column is the history where you can look through every single one of the old tests and export them. And it's even got key information of drives that basically gives you how many times it reconnected, how many times it's had bad sectors, and how many times it have to be re-identified. And those are the ones you really wanna look at. And as you can see, it's zero, 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 so it's not a very fun graph, but it's a fun thing because I don't have any issues. So that's just for one single drive. You can also go through and look at all the reallocation sections. If you go into this right here, It'll show you the bad sector counts for every single one of them, which is really nice to have so you can get a quick snapshot of them. Because especially if you have like 10 drives, it's a pain to go through each one individually. All right, and so now let's set this up so it runs automatically. And we're gonna do that, we're gonna use Test Scheduler. So Test Scheduler, as you can see here, is really easy to use. These are the ones I've already set up, but we'll go ahead and create a new one here. So all you have to do is click Create, and then you get to choose what the task type is. I've got Iron Wolf drives, so I've got Smart or Iron Wolf Health. So if I want to do just a Smart, I do Smart. And then I get to choose a quick test or an extended test. Extended tests will take longer, but I've not found them to take that long. So you can select that here. And then you can either choose all drives, I would just choose all drives, or you can just do a few selected drives. It's pretty choosable here. And then give it a name. And then finally, you can schedule it. So if you're doing an extended test, you're either gonna to wanna to choose weekly, basically choose which day you wanna run it on, or you can run it monthly. Basically, I would probably choose it weekly and just throw it on at midnight because you're not gonna be using your NAS probably, and it really doesn't slow your NAS down that much. Then nightly, you can do the quick tests. That way, if something does come up that's significant, it'll get found sooner. And so it's incredibly easy to do. And so now, as you can see, it's scheduled and it's gonna say the next run date. 
I can even just run it manually here. Then you can go through and add as many other ones as you like to. So finally, we can go into settings, and this is a great one. It'll send you a monthly hard drive report via email. This is great to have because it's a really easy way to archive it. If you're not great at archiving and your NAS fails and you wanna see what happened, you can have that report sent to you monthly, and that's another indication of, oh, hey, why did this one change? It's a great setup and the bad sector warning. Basically, I've got this enabled. Anytime the bad sector count changes on any of my drives, it sends me an email, which I think is really good. Then if you got newer drives and your smart database is kind of off, you can update it. Basically, it's updating what the smart characteristics of each drive is. You don't need to run it that often, and honestly, I've never had an issue with it, but it takes like half a second, so if you're having any issues, try that. All right, well, that's all there is about smart tests when you're working with a Synology NAS. They're great because they can give you a heads up if your hard drive is about to fail and let you get ready. It's a great thing to have, and so I would really recommend setting it up because it costs nothing. All right, well, that's it. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.